Jehova mı lak? Allah mı Allah mı? Jehova mı lak? Ya me, rakis. Jehova gadolga, makarian tios. Jehova yerdenay, Jehova Elohim. Kurios tios bente kreta, kurios tios pestos. Elde et Jehova, el emuna Jehova. Ibas lian kurios, otios, o bente kreta. Baslios, baslion, kai kurios, kurion. Jehova dabar halal, Elohim dabar halal. Jehova Elohim, gadol gadol gebura. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christon isun ton kurion. Kurion ni mahagion panta kreta, gadol gadol gebura. Jehova Ishmael kam, Jehova Shamma. Elnakum Jehova, Elnakum Yapa. Netzak Israel, La Sheker, Gava, Gava. Triembos Jehova. Isus Christos, Panta Kreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Mora Rosh Nasa, Elohim Elohim. Ille ilaye shalut, Yehovah malak. Yehovah malak, olam olam ad. Yehovah elahenu, Yehovah ekad, gadol gadol, gebura. Zaan logan, ogar, tautios. Dulas, desmias, despotes, dikaye sune, in Isus Christos. Kurion, kurion, kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa Panta Kreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Derek Emunabakar, Mishfat Shah. The Megalogai of Yahweh Elilion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself for prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkeno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing how have we left the first love of the Lord and not able to become the Gebor men in the Lord and to look upon the pain of the Lord of a God as a mature man rather than following Christ as yet babies rather than grown up adult sons in the Lord. The reasons how we are able to let go the first love of Lord God the Father purely because of our ignorance. In the past dispensation, in the book of Numbers chapter 15 in verse 25, there is an offering given for ignorance. But right now in the church age, there can be no sacrifice given for the ignorance. 
In the past, they were not having the indwelling monitoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in them. But right now in the church age, every believer has been prayed by God the Father to be granting them the same indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost to be indwelt which was there in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we cannot go to claim that we are ignorant. So how are we living the first love? So for that we should know, in my country India, people are crazy about cricket. The man who would become a successful, beginning of his earlier days, not having the influence of their father or any other thing, but who has been coming with the real talent, First, no matter whatever it is, he would certainly be ready to play when a chance has been given. The chance of having extreme hot, extreme cold, or how humidity the conditions may be, or whatsoever it is. That man would be ready to play because he wants to prove his chance. He wants to prove his caliber. And he wants to say to the world that he is also having some talent to sustain in that cricket team. Because this is what we can illustrate for you better for the first love. And then, after becoming successful, the same man, when he's been given the same opportunity to play, whether it were the conditions of extreme hot or cold. Now he would say to the organizers or to the team saying, it is not a time for us to play now. When it is in the cool of the day, we will put some floodlights and we will try to play the game. Because now we can look the attitude of difference in the same man who was earlier for the first time was eager enough to play at any condition or at any climatic conditions because he was simply eager enough to go to prove that it is his caliber or the love for the country wherewith he could go on to prove that no matter what he is readily available at any cost he is readily available but after when he has been established his name, or when he has thought that his name has been confirmed now, having some name and fame in advertisements of all the things in the world, and that man now he says, in the same climatic conditions, what earlier I wanted to prove myself to become a cricketing star, there is no need for me to prove now because I have become now a cricketing star. So, in the cool of the day, by putting floodlights, we shall play. You know, here the point what I want to illustrate about the first love is that the way before you could become a cricketing star first, no matter the conditions, the climatic conditions or the conditions of his payments or whatever it is, he was just eager enough to prove his chance. No matter whatever they were. He was just eager enough to prove his chance. He was just waiting if he would get a chance, whether it may be the standards of extreme sun or extreme rain or whatever it is. He would simply have a chance to prove, whether it is in the realm of bowling or batting or fielding, or if he's a wicket keeper. He would just eagerly wait to prove that he is really reliable for the future, for that country or for that team. He would be so eager enough. But after once he has been established, the same zeal is lost. You know, here also the same first love which was there towards Christ so that we could become the adult sons of his glory. We, through our ignorance, 
thinking that we are able to come to Christ and now our name has been forever recorded in the heaven, we are not having that same first love which has to be proven every time to Christ our Lord of God. Therefore, this great passage in the recommendation to the churches, particularly in this book of Revolution, in chapter 2, very first church, to the church of Ephesus, you know what does he say? He says unto them, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and you cannot bear them which are evil. You have tried them which say they are apostles, and have found them they are liars. And you have borne and had patience, and for my name's sake you have labored, and you have not fainted. So who is this person who is talking these words? He's saying that this is the one who holdeth seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. That means what? The man who is the word of God. He is giving instructions to Apostle John to go and proclaim the word revolution, apocalyptic, and to say what? To reveal them, let them know. Give them as a verdict. If you haven't blown this verdict to them, they will not come to know. So he says, revolution that is called to be apocalyptic, divine revolution of Saint John. It is not the title what you can find, Saint John the Divine, no. It is the divine revolution of Saint John, so that you can understand over here in simple terms, emphasizing that you people ought to be able to realize these words, this truth which has been given for us, to teach and to emphasize, stating that this is the one who holdeth the seven stars, and he is the one who has been able to walk in the midst of those seven candlesticks. And this one is able to give So he's writing now to say, be aware about your first law. I know your works. I know the things pertaining to your patience. So all these things he writes over here to teach to us the example saying that, I have something against you because you have left the first love. You know this first love, the illustration what I gave you regarding the cricket star. First to get into a chance to prove himself no matter what. Whatever may be the conditions, he is eager enough, he is happy enough. He is just waiting, Lord, just give me one chance. They may be praying to his guards and is coming to say, Give me one chance, it's enough. I'll prove my caliber. But when he's been established, the same man may say, In these extreme humid conditions, we cannot play. We will make it up in the night. Sometimes there may be demands from the same player. But here, Lord God the Father says to the book of Ephesus over here to these people, emphasizing, I know what are you. I know your works. I know the standards of your patience, your labor. And then you have been not able to bear them that which are evil. So all this is good in you. And you have been able to make, to say, to find out that these are saying they're apostles, but you have tried them, he says the word over here. You have tried them and to say, put to test by experience, by knowing them, by the deeds, by the way of life. And today, though we have been able to reach 2,000 years in this present Christendom, the children, that is meant to say, technon are not being found. The adult sons are not being found. And these people, they are not at all able to look and to become what has been called over here with their experience that the false men who have entered into the pulpits who are not able to teach them the right word of Lord God. They are not able to find it. They are not able to look upon it in the process of experience. They are not able to understand it. That is what they are not able to try. 
They're not able to put into test. How you would put into test? You have left your first love. If you have been in the first love, you would have been constantly diligent enough to look. What is the word of Lord God? That's the ultima for you. If the Bible says every day take up your cross and come to church, that will be the ultima for you. But you have left your first love, the love which is so much essential for us. The zeal how this cricketing star should have had, not only in the first game, till to the last game, what he plays to that country. The same zeal, the same enthusiasm, the same thing, whether the results may vary, but he should have had that same fervent love. But today we have left that first love towards God. The love towards saying we have to first take the word of Lord God. Let it be anything else in this life. And you know how gracious Lord God the Father is. While we were at dead, he says in, in, in Ephesians 2, 5. While we were at dead because of his great love and mercy upon us. Christ our Lord of a God, who has been sent on our behalf, he says over here in Ephesians chapter 2, in verse number 4 particularly, God who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, he says now, even when we were dead, the word called over here, necros, that meant to say what spiritually dead, destitute of a life that could recognize and to be devoted to God. The life that is not being properly recognized because you are destitute of this spiritual life, because of your trespasses and sins, as you are all the time inactive. So while we were at dead, and today people are not able to realize up to what extent we are being put to death. You know the reasons why we are going to put to death. People may not understand it. The Hebrew word is called to be mut. The strong code number for it is 4191. And the meaning of that mut in the pictographical representation meant to say what? Your blood doesn't have the authority sealed upon it. That you belong to my Christ. You haven't been yet born again in the Lord. Though you may say I've been born again in the Lord God. You aren't able to walk. You're just knowing him in the purpose of having relationship. But you haven't known him spiritually. You haven't known him in the standards of becoming. The demands of his will to be fulfilled in this life. You might be saying that I believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but the word of Lord God says I don't have that authority upon your blood. If you're having that authority, then you wouldn't have been ignorant. What you would do? You would go to change your thinking, erect a structure according to the thinking of Christ. And for that sin of ignorance, what Numbers 15.25 emphasizes, Christ, our Lord of our God, begins his ministry, as example, you know about John the Baptist as well. They begin their ministry saying, repent, metanoia, change your thinking. They start the ministry saying, change your thinking. You know why? The meaning of ignorance, what we can find in the pictographical representation for this word over here, which he says in Numbers chapter 15 in verse number 25, Shagag. And the word for Shagag is nothing but it is an error. What is that error? He says, you know, your thought process is not erected according to the structure and the thinking of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for which cause in Ephesians 4, verses 11 through following, he gave past to teachers and evangelists, particularly the permanent spiritual gifts, apart from the temporary which were done away with apostles and prophets, they have given us the completed canon of scripture. So the reason of giving you the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher is to make you sure that you all erect a structure according According to the thinking pattern of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that's what he says in Ephesians 4, till all could come to the unity of the knowledge of the Son of God. The same thing in Romans chapter 8, he further goes to describe.
There he teaches to us many great things and emphasizes that you have been predestined in Romans 8, 29 to conform to the image of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, dear brethren, people simply think marriage is in the way of libido. If ever the parents are clever enough to see to whom that girl or boy is getting married, first of all, the girl should be eager enough to get to a marriage to a person who is able to edify them, who is able to build them in the Word of God. The man should be happy enough to marry such a woman who is thirsty enough to carry this burden of the Word of Lord God for the next generations. Such marriage will have all the time the first love, the first love towards Lord God than anything else on this earth. Such a couple will be free from the sin of ignorance because every day they come, they understand today the grace of the Lord of God has been given not to spend our time in this vanities of life. So what they do, we have to be learning many more things which have been hidden and kept for us in the Bible. So come, let's go to dig it. So you have to come back and say, renovate the standards of your thinking to erect the standards of your thinking in you like the thinking of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what your real life is. That's how the couple, one together, they have to come. Because your ministry, which Christ our Lord of God begins over there, he says, by the word, repent. You know why? Because while we were even dead in our sins, the sins include not knowing Christ, spiritual destitutes we were. But now the sins, what you are, grieving and squelching and vexing and lying and resisting Lord God, the Holy Ghost, even after believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the principal theme of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, given to us is to edify, is to teach us, to guide us unto all the truth. But you are still able to live a life of sin. You are dead in your sins. To such an extent you are left the first love. Just slip into that example of the cricketer. Earlier he would be anywhere, anytime available. But once he has been established, the same man changes. That's what he, he looks. The availability of that it indicates, saying he has left the first love. First he wanted to prove himself, so he was available at any time. But now since he's been established himself, he would just neglect But for Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, every time, the day when you believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, till the day you die, every day you should be free from that sin of ignorance in the presence of Lord God. Because every day you should have that zeal. Every day you should know the word of Lord God. It is not whether it has been raining or shining or there is a birth in your home or there is a death in your home that you say some reasons and excuse. Because, dear brethren, every day is the gift of God for us not to enjoy joy or do our work, but to do His will. John 6, 38. And you know how does it strengthen us? In Luke 5, 8 through 10, that great passage when Peter declares himself, Lord, I am a sinner, depart from me, after getting that multiple varieties of fishes. And including there, you can find the people who came to help him. We find the categories of the people James, John, the sons of Zebedee, partners who were with Simon, that is Peter, and Jesus said unto him, Fear not. The word over here, fearing, is called to be phobio. That meant to say what? Do not be afraid or to get frightened. And you know what does he say unto him? Frighten not from henceforth, you shall catch the men. The word catch is very, very important. It says in the heb in the Greek, it is a combination of two words. First word is called to be zoon, followed by the word called to be ar ag agrio. The word zoon agrio. So, zoon meant to say what? The one who is living or who is alive. 
and the one who is been agrio meant to say what to hunt pursuing eagerly so if you are afraid of lord god you don't have that first love to pursue him eagerly to go and take in the word of lord god every day you don't have that pursuableness in you so dear brethren he says so here from henceforth you shall catch men but what does he say first fear not if you can open up your bible to matthew chapter 25 and this great lessons of the parables we learn many essence of life in 25 25 of this man to whom god the father has given one talent you know what does he say he says to that master saying i knew that you are a hard man that is you are a rough man harsh man reaping where you haven't sown gathering where you haven't uh, strawed that is which you have been not winnowed the grain so here he says dear brethren i was afraid <laughs> the same thing what you can look over here for the word for be you but christ our lord of a god says to peter there fear not because with lord god the father there is no injustice people may think we can find injustice with the lord god sowing where or reaping where he hasn't sowed gathering where he hasn't winnowed you would have one talent and every believer in christ has given at least minimum one talent you have to wake up it's a talent of helps or administration or gifts because we are here to fulfill Ephesians 4 11 through 13 that great passage which emphasizes because it is a role of each and every believer in the Lord saying that in verse number 13 till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God where unto a perfect man what is that perfect man according to the rules and regulations or according to the standards of the age of maturity what we can call over here in helikia which meant to say the things pertaining to the maturity or the stature which has to be from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun in your blood it has to be the maturity or the thinking like our lord and savior jesus christ but what you have been able to look now you are able to understand that this thinking is gone and what you have been replacing apart from that thinking just for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley you are thinking that you have been there in the perfect maturity according to the structure or the age of maturity of christ but you haven't been there so here for each and every one god the father could give at least minimum one talent the talent of spreading the word of lord god the talent of praying the talent of given to you the standards of what you can call the gift of helps or hospitality or administration the temporary spiritual gift which have been seized at the completion of the canon of scripture there is no need for it to be there but you have now the permanence of the spiritual gifts by default every believer is an ambassador to lord god the father so you have your work of representing christ you are you are an ambassador of lord and savior jesus christ therefore you have been called now to be a saint therefore christ our lord of our god says if you have known christ who is it is not able to shine in that darkness or made known my christ in this darkness you know why you're not able to show or shine forth in such darkness he says in isaiah chapter 50 in verse number 11 and 12 emphasizing particularly because you are having your own light around you and the people who are having their own light around them he says they will be punished by the lord the same thing in as chapter 15 verse number 11 he says the people who are compassing fire about themselves with the lights therefore they are walking in their lights and they are been able to kindle in those lights but he said 
they shall lie down in sorrow since they have not able to walk according to my demands he said they will easily or simply lie down in sorrow so one of the translation it says but you people who oppose me by lighting your own fires and by carrying your own flaming torches he says unto them go ahead and live according to your own knowledge according to what you think is best Jehovah tells you what will happen to you he will make you die in great torment this is one of the translation called to be udb in the mice word bible so dear brethren this translation goes to give you to understand if you are able to walk according to your knowledge then you shall never shine therefore he says in verse 10 of isaiah 50 who is it that feareth not lord god obeyeth not his voice and still the one who is walking in darkness and he hath no process of light the word light over here is noga the meaning of noga dear brethren it meant to say saying no shining if there is no shining which is warm and broad shining which we have to shine forth in the midst of this people that meant to say what you haven't still believed that you have been let loose from the nature of your all sin nature life no shining in the sense you haven't let loose you haven't been free no shining he said and since you haven't let loose but god the father said that he has let you loose and his flawless way of life is our life now then why is it you're still enjoying the flesh by letting go your first love to god the father so the purpose of this is said do not be ignorant several times he said do not be ignorant therefore christ our lord of god begins his ministry emphasizing the point repent 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 when he begins his ministry the very first word including john the baptist or you can look upon the standards of this great man who began their ministry it is all the time emphasizing repent 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 you can look upon this great verse in matthew chapter 3 in those days came john the baptist preaching in the wilderness of judah and saying repent what is repent metanoia the same word for opposite of ignorance what is ignorance we can find in the sin of ignorance of numbers chapter 15 in verse number 25 emphasizing ignorance the pictographical representation which is nothing but having your thought process not erected according to the structure and to the thinking of the knowledge of bible doctrine that's very simple dear brethren people may try to define many defines on this earth particularly for defining enlightenment what it would mean having the power of your program in your subconscious mind people love to talk what is soul or what is the purpose of this life you know what is all ignorant without christ or so lord of a god the end of all human wisdom which is the knowledge of bible doctrine the author and finisher of our man's faith on this earth only christ our lord of a god because in isaiah 43 he says verse 7 through 9 i have made them for my glory pull them back let's sit and reason together in isaiah chapter 42 it ought to be in verse number 9 the reasons why he goes to put upon he said over here it's isaiah 43 it's not 42 it's isaiah 43 in verse number 9 he said in verse 7 everyone that is called by my name i have created him for my glory any man who is right now on the face of the earth thinking to believe his eternal destiny according to the standards of their teachings but not coming to know the real light christ our lord of a god who alone said i am the way the truth and the life because we the christians have to shine as light luminaries holding for the word of lord god in the midst of such powers and crooked nation generations but these people they are not being able to say so dear brethren everyone that is called by my name for i have created him for my glory i formed him yes i have made him the three words you can find over here for creation which is called bara yatser and 
Asa. So here, Bana, Yatser, and Asa. So he says in verse 8, Bring forth the blind people. Who are the blind people? People who haven't been knowing the gospel of Christ. And bring them the, the deaf, who are the deaf, who haven't been able to listen the marvelous wonders of his glory through his word. And he says, let all the nations be gathered together from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun. Let all the men who has been there on this earth, put them together. Let them be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified. Or let them hear and say, you know, after you have been able to talk to them such great things in knowledge of Bible doctrine, after hearing your discourse, after knowing the real things of your word, they would love to conclude and they would say, Yes, this is the truth. And apart from it, there is no other God. So he says, pull them back, let them come. Though they were blind, though they have ears and they're not able to hear if they have been deaf, not worry, because I have made them for my glory that is called to honor me. Because they have been there in the process of looking to understand the future, but they cannot. So he says unto them, You are my people. You are my witnesses. You are the one who shall nagi'ed, meant to say what, declare them. If you are not able to declare them, they will not understand. They can never realize that if they are not able to understand. What is this real definition of Bible doctrine? If you don't declare them, then they will never come to know. So he said, You are my witnesses, said the Lord God, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God, formed neither shall there be after me. And he said, I am even I am the Lord, beside me there is no Savior. I have declared, Nage'ed, I have opened it and given to you in the process of making. If it doesn't go, then there is no one who could declare them. So he said, I have declared how through his son being one mediator. He's not a mediator in the standards of human nature, but he says he is mediator of God, divine as well as human nature. That's the deity of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in his hypostatic union. So he says he is a mediator of one God, even in the book of Galatians chapter 3. In verse number 20, he says over here, emphasizing, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Meant to say what? He is a mediator representing God. Because he knew very well what is man. Man is absolutely sin. So, equal with God and equal with man, he writes in 1 Timothy 2, 5 again for us. So that he doesn't want anyone to perish. But everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory, thorough knowledge of his word. So he is mediator of God, or God becomes our mediator. Because he knows very well we are absolute sinners. We cannot go back to God the Father if it is Christ Jesus of the Lord of a God who come in the form of the flesh, the seed of the woman being promised in Genesis 3.15. If not, we couldn't, we couldn't be saved. Though you may have the metamorphisms over there. Because man continually doeth evil. The very next chapter from 3 to 6, you can find the growth of three, three chapters. In the sixth chapter, you can understand continually evil. What is man? Continually evil. When he grows back to Isaiah, he says over here in chapter number 42, in verse number 8 or 9, man is rebellion right from the mother's womb. So Christ, our Lord of our God, knows what we are. But yet he represented us. That's the verse in Ephesians 2, 5. While we were yet dead in our sins and trespasses. Such a great love of God the Father, which he poured down upon us. We don't deserve it, yet he gave for us. He says, even while we were yet dead in our sins, he has revived us. 
with whom with whom he has made us to be once again su followed by the word zo po e o when to say what together he has made us alive and now we are becoming the independent existence of that great zoan nature or the zao life in us to make us to be alive that's what he says and he calls us that he has quickened us or made us to be alive together with Christ and in the bracket he emphasizes by grace only you are being saved not of your works lest any man should boast why because of verse 4 god who is rich in mercy for his great love way with he loved us but we are letting go the first love to god the father how you have lost your first love it is a cross check illustration of the cricketing star just imagine first he has that zeal to be successful afterwards when he successful he doesn't have that zeal that love becomes cold that's what we are reading from ephesians sorry the, the, to the church of ephesus in the, the process of revolution 2 he said but i have something against you you have left your first love ardent love boiling love love to be the same till the day you die so he says over there brother run in verse number 6 and who hath raised him together and made us to sit together raising him together and causing us to sit together sun agairo followed by sukathizo which is called to sit down together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus this information what we have from verse 4 through 7 if every believer would know this if every believer would analyze and learn this or if every believer would go to put it upon his heart sealed they were at least come to pay once again back the true love to god we are yet sinners in the sense we were dead in our sins we don't deserve that's the great mediation work of our lord and savior jesus christ he knows what we are there is no good that cometh out as the people claim saying that is there anything that good cometh out from the nazareth then we look in john chapter 1 emphasizing come let's look and see john chapter 2 come and see yourself he said to them the same thing which christ our lord of god might be waiting for us is there anything good which i can give for this great sacrifice which i have done on the cross but people don't realize that the great work of christ jesus our lord of god they think it is just granted we believe in the lord we accept him you know it's in john 146 nathaniel said unto him can there any good thing come out of nazareth and philip said unto him come and see the same thing what today we have to be for the lord and savior jesus christ emphasizing the standards of what we can call as saying being done such sort of a great mediation work in our life we are worthy to the lord god's work we are worthy to the lord god's grace and there is surely a great good thing which god the father can give to us or show through us in this life and what is that great thing goodness what we can god the father can expect from our life the word over here what we can call for good is meant to say agathe sune or that which is having the same goodness which we can find in ephesians in colossians chapter 1 in verse 18 agathe sune dikai sune and alethia the same thing over here what he says is there anything good the word good over here represents back to that agathe sune so dear brethren he says over here emphasizing that what is it we could be in the standards of his great love which could be before the foundation of the world he has called us to be into his good works that great good works are the works which are pleasing to god the father
So being presented in his presence, he emphasizes, let us be to the standards of this great word. Again, he says, holy, unreprovable in his sight, so that we could all the days of this life, we could be proving that we are hagios, again, the word called to be amomas, again, the word called to be agnacletas. So again, he says the same thing over there for us. The fruit of the Spirit in Ephesians chapter 5, again in verse number 9. What is that? The fruit of the Spirit or the fruit of light he taught to be. He says over here, goodness, agathesune, righteousness, dikaiesune, and aletheia. Because he wants you all to prove, is there anything good? Yes, we can prove that we are good. It's like the way Nathaniel claims to Philip. Philip said, come and see. The same thing what Satan could claim to God the Father. Is there anything good in this church age believers? So God the Father would come and say, come and see. How many people are there for Christ? Come and see. How many people are there for true to the Lord? How many people are really still in the first love? How many people are marching ahead to fulfill the earth with the knowledge of Bible doctrine or with the glory of Lord God the Father, which is his desire in Numbers 14, 21? How many people are there still able to be having that zealous love like a chaste virgin to Christ. And there you can find every believer if you're still not into that stage of John 5, 33. Where Christ, our Lord of our God, says to them, He was a witness for you for a certain season on this earth. If that is not your testimony in this life, you would really lose the grace of Lord God to just simple vanity life on this earth. Because he said, he bear witness unto the truth. And the same thing you can look upon in Second Chronicles, illustration about Yehoram in chapter number 20, or 21 in verse number 19, he says, it came to pass that in the process of time, after the end of two years, his bowels fell out, that is, having sickness in his gut. By the reason of the sicknesses, so he died of sore diseases, and his people made no burning for him, like the burning of his fathers. Burning is the same example what we can find about the illustration of John the Baptist, that he was like the light shining and you people rejoiced in that light of the Lord. So dear brethren, he emphasizes the same thing, the word about John, and he says that in his ministry you love to rejoice. And that ministry, what was been given to him, he proved and he executed it according to the will of God the Father. But now in his light, though you have been given this great light of our life, we are not able to show forth the same ministry of Lord God the Father. Though he says, let your lions be gridded about and your lights burning. You know, in the ministry of John the Baptist being our example, though he says, no man is greater than John the Baptist who has been born in the Old Testament of a woman. But now in the church age, they that are least are far greater than John the Baptist, because we are here to love the light, and the light will condemn us. But the people actions and deeds are so worst that they don't want to expose their sinful way of life, because they love evil. But here regarding John the Baptist, he said, in his ministry, he was shining like that light luminaries, and you people enjoyed that ministry of him. It has to be in Luke chapter 12, in verse number 35 or 36. So he says, let your lights be shining as they ought to be in the Lord. And over here, he emphasizes the point of Ephesians 6 as well that when you put upon, standing upon your liar's grid with truth, having your breastplate with the righteousness of the Lord of a God, you can shine like that luminaries, and you will be found in such a great life where John the Baptist also was a witness. But Yehoram, what happened? He was not even like his father. 
he couldn't fulfill it so he lost it he was not that witness so here we look upon the word he says that the people made no burning for him like the burning of his father that means they did not rejoice in his life in his ministry and today we can look upon the way of our life which has been so stupid and so idiotic manner that we are not able to understand that our life also should be like the light luminaries so that people can look upon Christ they're not able to look upon the great things of the word of lord god therefore dear brethren since you have left your first love having ignorance in you your ministry is not able to look upon such great life for the lord you know not why you are surviving on this earth you know not why is the reason you are still able to breathe on this earth you have left your first law long back you are proving your ignorance to the highest in everything you have your ignorance in everything so dear brother when here you can look the very first thing to overcome your ignorance he said by john the baptist in matthew 3 in verse 2 repent for the kingdom of god is at hand a kingdom of heaven in matthew 3 8 again he said after giving that great discourse bring forth therefore fruits that which are meet or worthy for repentance the same thing what is apparent in revelation 2 great gift to the church which has been given us the revolution he writes again repent repent or else i will come speedily and i will take away the standards of your life so he says over here dear brethren in the book of revolution again if you would look repent or else i will come speedily and i will take away your candlestick after this first love in revelation chapter 2 in verse 4 he says over here saying never the less i have something against you because you have left your first love remember therefore from where you have fallen and matter not here change your thinking do the first works so or else i will come unto thee quickly and will remove the candlestick out of his place except you repent the same thing over here again in revelation chapter 2 in verse number 16 he says repent or else i will come unto thee quickly and will fight you with the sword of my mouth again in revelation chapter 2 in verse 21 and again as well as 22 he said i have given her space to repent to her fornication and she repented not behold i will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds again in revelation chapter 3 in verse number 3 dear brethren he uses the word metanoia remember therefore how we have received and heard and hold fast and repent you know the way how you are listening to the doctrine whether it is been there in the realm of exegetical day by day word by word line by line precept upon precept or how have you heard it or how have you been able to receive it or how have you able to make it up to hold fast on that he says repent change your mind get back therefore you shall not watch that hour when i come therefore i will come on there as a thief and you will not know so that you will be left over again the great conclusion of revelation 3:19 to the laodicean churches he says therefore whomsoever i love i rebuke them and chasten them be jealous therefore and repent 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 meant to say what come out of your sin of ignorance ask any believer even the pastors who have been there for you to call as pastors in your church you listen to the conversations of them they're talking they're teaching opening up their mouth they don't be as divine oracles they don't love to change you or make you to be in the concentration of repentance and get back to Christ pastors love to talk the terms of the secretary or the church secretary committee therefore you can look upon their lives they are still ignorant the sin of ignorance in our midst because they have left the first love they don't want to be in the first love of the lord god beginning with john the baptist over here in his ministry you can find again over here 
He emphasizes the point in the ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 4, that great chapter we all know, the chapter of testing for 40 days and 40 nights. And then when he comes to that synagogue, he comes to open up and there he reads the scroll pertaining to Isaiah, which has been recorded for us in Isaiah 61 verses 1 and 2, particularly only half of the verse 2. And then he said, Today this has been fulfilled, which has been spoken by Isaiah the prophet, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw the great light. That is what we have to be. But in Isaiah 50 verses 10 and 11, he said, Who is it? They are still able to walk in darkness. They are not able to look upon the true light of God. So he says, The people which sat in darkness are the great light, and to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death, light is sprung up. And then you know, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say the very first words of a year of life of Christ, O Lord of God, recording in the red, Repent! So he ends up in math, in Numbers 15.25 saying sin of ignorance. He begins his life over here to teach. Repent. Ignorance is nothing but your brethren. Your thought process is not erected as per the demands of Bible doctrine. That's ignorance. Your thinking process is not according to the standards of your great first love, what you had towards Lord God. Your first love you might have said, Lord, I want to know everything about you. Fulfill my desire. But as the time goes on, you might be saying, Lord, this much is enough. You know how the congregation goes to react. First they say, the new pastor has come, come, let's look what he's going to preach. They'll show such sort of a zeal and interest in the pastor saying that they are being down to earth for everything before the pastor. But as the time goes by, they don't even love to wish. And where did they come to the church? Since he has been into the realm of some post. To gain that money to be collected, he comes and he goes. You know, that's the word what we can find out here for us. When you haven't been having that first love, that zeal for God, anytime, anywhere, first come, repent. The reason why he goes to give you this meaning of repent is very, very simple. Because looking upon the time, you should be the great one in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Because over here in Lamentations chapter 3, in verse number 1, he said, I am a man that hath seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. You know, who is this man? He's not just an ordinary man. People may think he will be an ordinary man or Adama or Isha or something else or Enosh. No. The word for man over here is called to be Gebor. Who is this Gebor? The man who has erected a structure in his body according to the renovated standards of Bible doctrine as such, the one who has great strength and authority so that he is all the time successful in strength and authority. In that great strength and authority, he is able to perform every time that which is in the ministry, what we can call in Isaiah chapter 11, there he said, particularly the sevenfold ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So here we look upon the process in the reverse order. The first is said, the fear of the Lord God. Then the second one we read about called to be the standards of the knowledge of Lord God. The third one, Gebor. Here the man is a Gebor. The man who has erected in his structure, in his body, the thinking of Christ. Only such men, he says, they can come to know and learn what is the real pain, the affliction of the roar of his wrath. You know, great men on this earth who are called to be seges or wisdom men. They would say, greater you come to know about eternity, greater you will be tolerant towards the people's mistake. The same thing what Christ, the Lord of God, said in this Luke chapter 23, the very first phrase on his cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. 
Because greater you come to look upon your eternal standards, greater you come to look upon and enjoy the thinking of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, greater you will be tolerant. Though they may be rebellion, you come to give them with grace to understand the word of Lord God. Though they reject, you try to give them the will of Lord God. You know, he is a man of strength. You know why? Because he has tasted or seen the affliction. He has inspected. He knew what is that thinking. If it goes wrong, he has known what will be that affliction. The word affliction over here is called to be as or in or that misery in simple words. What is that misery to be occupied with or they're able to live with? He says that great that, that great thing which is of a great importance which you've been thinking that after death you'll be in the presence of Lord God the Father, which is your standards of thinking, he said they have gone. So Ain is nothing but your brethren, the watching over something of importance. So he says, I am a man of affliction. I have seen. You're thinking that you'll be given these things as the word of Micaiah, what we can look in Second Kings, when the man comes to say in chapter number 18, saying that, I have one man in Judah who prophesies, but he never tell good to me. Then the king of Judah says, call him. And when he comes, he says, as this prophets have said, let it be the same thing the, over the mouth of 400 men who are false ones. The spirit of lying comes to them and he says, Go, you'll prosper. But this man, he said, How many times I should bade you to tell me the truth? So when he tells, I have seen you people scattered out. And the one who has been next to him slaps on his face and he says, Now you tell from where the spirit of God cometh. Or which way it went. It. So he said, Tomorrow you'll come to know. So they put him without food and water. So you know this. So this man is saying, I have seen the things that are happening in the heaven. And then there he says, who will go to deceive this king? All planned this way, that way, that manner, this manner, but the spirit of lying, it comes and deceives them. So I said, go and be successful in your deception. And today, what is the deception we're able to find? No discipleship program in our pulpit. That's the greatest deception which people are not able to learn. So here, the man who had seen inspected affliction, meant to say what? You are thinking that will be something of a great result for you tomorrow in the heaven. But he said, since you haven't met the simple terms and conditions of which the demands of the word of Lord God are, that is to keep your first love fervent and repent and be jealous because God the Father whomsoever he loveth he chasteneth, he correcteth you and he wants you to be in his process but you haven't repented, but you haven't changed and you look you haven't repented you haven't changed so what happens over here since you haven't repented besides giving you this great information You'll be thinking your names have been recorded in the book of life, but God the Father says, no chance at all. I have seen that affliction who, a man of Gabor's strength, who has been there in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, he looks because he sees the terms and conditions of the word of Lord God and he finds that you are not being found worthy there. The terms and conditions of the knowledge of Bible doctrine are not been recorded in you. The demands of the word of Lord God, that's what he said, Arise awake that sleepeth. In Ephesians 5.14, what are the prescription demands? Acribos, according to the word of Lord God, which you haven't been there. So he says, Arise awake and look. Your salvation is something far greater than you expected. So what are the demands of Bible doctrine? Accurate demands of Bible doctrine, you may not know. So he says, look accurately and wake up and be qualified for that life. But what we are spending our time, <laughs> we are spending our time in vanities of vanities. So here, besides that great Gebor man, if it were there for the people of the Israelites in the third standard, or to the third spirit, 
we have to further go ahead from there. We have to come back after that great lesson of Gebura. We'll come to the standards of what he can call over here, emphasizing in Isaiah chapter 11, that after Gebura's strength, you will be taking up the strength of the knowledge furthermore into the step called to be counseled etza according to the upright standards of his word after etza you're going to take understanding wherewith you're able to build up for christ the resting place wherewith your life is going to be now in the standards of the word of lord god and then he says you're going to be in the spirit of wisdom, kakma. You build up your wall of fortification in such a manner that you love to be like a scribe unto the Lord. And then the spirit of the Lord God, the seventh stage. We have now given the seven stages of the spirit. But here in Lamentations chapter 3, in verse 1, you look, he is a man of Geburah who had seen your affliction. What will be your future? You are thinking that would be great for you, of a great importance. But he said, it is not such a great thing what you are looking for your results because you have left your first love. You have been still ignorant. You haven't been repenting your life. You haven't changed. Because of that great sin of ignorance, God the Father comes with his message, with his Son, saying first through John the Baptist and then through Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, repent. And the same conclusion chapters of Revelation 2 and 3, he said five times, repent, repent, repent. And all the time, what is Christianity? Romans 12, 1, 2, and 3. Renovate the standards of your thinking according to the standards and the demands of the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That's what your real life is. Confirming not to the world, but confirming to the image of Christ for which cause you have been predestined. You cannot confirm to the image of Christ if your thinking is not renovated. How your thinking can be renovated, how to say that your programs to be rescheduled, how when you know there is something greater, far higher than the thinking of the man, what are the programs that is going to take care of your brain? The programs pertaining to the knowledge of Bible doctrine. If the Bible could say, like Caleb, the man who said, though he was 85, he has in him in the vigor of 40. The man who can look upon uh, Moses, though he was 120 years old, his eyesight is not dimmed, his vigor and valor is not abated. So there is no excuse for him to say, today I'm having such weakness, the callousness of my feet or this or that, or my body has been waxed old, this or that. No, he says every day, first have that same fervent love of zeal to the Lord. Come and carry your cross. Just imagine a man like Moses, just imagine a man like Caleb, if you're able to live and inspire Othniel to give his daughter, the man who goes on to conquer at the other end, the children of Enoch, he comes with great with great pistis or faith in the Lord God, and he comes to challenge Othniel, and Othniel goes to conquer the place Kerieth Sefer, or the cry of the scribes, or the eminent people of the scribes, or the worldly knowledge of that place, and he conquers them, and he gets them back to be calling the Word of God. It is a place of demand where the Word of Lord God has been taught. Just imagine what an inspiration Caleb might have given to Othniel, and Othniel becomes the first judge. In Judges 3.19 <coughs> or 3.9, he becomes the first judge. What an inspiration a man who gives saying that, though I'm 85, I haven't been the vigor of 40, because he was day by day walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. How much more today we have to be the men of great Gebor strength, far greater than Gebor strength to be the men of Christ, because we are walking breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. How much more great strength we have to prove. But here he says in Lamentations 3, 1, I have been a man, Gabor, who had seen the affliction, the affliction of your results, like the same Micah who has been found in Second Kings, chapter 18. I have seen how to deceive these prophets. So he says, I will be the lying spirit. The same thing when we look upon your life from the word of Lord God, we can easily tell up to what extent you are. 
without following the demands of the word of Lord God. Though he has given you Ephesians 2 verses 4 through 6, your life, and he wants to make you to sit, beginning with the ages, to follow one age upon the another, to be in the presence of his grace as a, as a great example of his grace. He wants to show forth to the entire world. But why are you not able to come to the wedding feast with the wedding garments? To know yourself, think yourself, what you are. What is that ignorance? What is that you are not associated with the vision of Lord God or to the future plan of Lord God? You know, the best of the best psychopaths or the psychiatrists, they want to say, saying to the point, man is being in the realm of nearly 95%. They don't have proper goals to set in their life. So they fail. The successful one are only 2 or 3% because they have a definite purpose of life, definite goal in life. But the remaining ones, why they're not successful, they would say because they don't have proper goal, they don't have proper image to success or to look what they have to be or they have to be in the standards of after 10 years from now. So they don't, they don't have proper image or vision or to say that proper goals in life. The reason of the failures is that they don't have proper vision or goal in life. But you know what the word of Lord God teaches? After now you die, where you will be? Will you be in the place of heaven? As Psalm 73 emphasizes, while here on this earth, O Lord, leaving you whom I desire, and apart from you who is there for me in the heaven, so that with your complete counsel of Bible doctrine you shall guide me, and later on you shall receive me into glory. Will that be your goal? Will that be your goal? Because he said, when it is your goal, he emphasizes what will be your life after you die. So who is that image? Image is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what your ultimate purpose is. So you have a goal, not like this 95% of the people who are living on this earth, not to reach a goal, not to reach the standards of this life. You have a goal, you have a reason, you have a purpose. But today what we are looking, no goal, no purpose. The life on this earth, people may be successful, unbelieving men, saying that I have this as my role, I have this as my goal. The role and goal, they may leave them to say after 10 years, they were successful to become like that. But after you die, you don't have your role, neither goal. Role is the role model of Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Goal is where he, has to, where he, where he is, so you ought to be sitting in his presence by becoming the one who overcometh. According to Revelation chapter 3, I will make him to sit in my throne, giving him a new name. That is your goal. But the people are so indifferent towards the goal and role of the Bible, which is given for every believer. And they're still expecting to say, we will be in the heaven. Dear brethren, fear like the thief on the cross. Who says, this punishment for us is true. But Lord, he addresses him, he reverence him. He come back to his consciousness, saying that we were notorious killers. We deserve this, but this man hasn't done anything. He's Lord. His mocking nature will come to his fear. And he recognizes that we are not worthy. He says, Lord, remember me. That day the thief was also been saved. That centurion was also been saved. Simon the Sirene was also been saved. <laughs> but if fools are not had been saved in the Lord. They have been given this great grace to understand after completion of the canon of Scripture, nearly 2,000 years of the church occurring on this earth. Begin on the day of Pentecost, because we are enjoying the days after Easter on this earth, or the resurrection on this earth. Yeah, just passed yesterday, the second Lent, meant to say today will be the 15th day of the Lord's appearance. Another still more, 40 days, still 25 days, he will be on this earth. Because we are just prefiguring you to your theta, to have your hypnosis to think of. After 40th day, he breathes upon them, the spirit of the Lord God, and he goes to send his divine help, paraclete guide on the 50th day. That is the beginning of the church. But from the day of the church begin till to the day of the rapture of the church, many people will come and go. Great variety of fishes will come unto the Lord. But they're living a life without goal, without role. 
because they have left the first law. And yet the ministers are motivating them for money. Ministers are asking and begging for money. They never able to realize the affliction. You think by watching carefully that something will be important after you die. Because in Christ you believed and afterwards you are going to rise to your hell. I will meet Lord back in your heaven. Now, Gabor man, a man of a maturity, he looks into this affliction. Then till you could become a mature man or a man of Gabor's strength, you cannot look. No, you will be still minor. The one who has married, she knows the responsibility than the one who doesn't have got married. The married one knows the responsibility towards both the families. But the one who hasn't been married, she doesn't know. How to rear the children, how to behave with the husband, how to show respect. Though she may think that I can learn this. But that maturity hasn't come yet. After you marry, you'll realize practically what is it. Till that time, you will be thinking, I can do better like this. I will be like this. I will take care of him like that. I will do this. I will do that. All will be flat. The same thing with you. Believing in Christ, you cannot know the responsibility, the burden of the people who are perishing in their souls. You just believed. As you grow up in the mature standards of the word of Lord God, from milk to bread, from bread to strong meat, Hebrews 5, 11 through 14. Because the one who is drinking milk is unrighteous. He, he is still not able to handle the word of Lord God accurately. So he's been still unrighteous. He's still been just like a baby. He doesn't know the persons of the things pertaining to the one who's having to eat strong meat. But the one who is drinking milk thinketh, saying that I can really handle. <laughs> and today you can look upon the church's status quo. People are still not even able to collect sincere, pure milk of the word. First Peter chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. If they would have gathered sincere milk, pure milk of the word of Lord God, they would have been very, very far away from such lies, hypocrisy, what the moral edifications being taught in the pulpits today. Moral cleansing, sanctifying their flesh and body. You know, that great word in First Peter chapter 2, if you have been born again in the Lord, he says, in verse 1, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all guile, all hypocrisy, all envies, and all evil speaking, as newborn babies, desire the sincere milk of the word, so that you may grow by. If you have tasted, if so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. If you have tasted that the Lord God is gracious. Then he said, Let go all your maligning nature, evil nature, ashamed of breaking your laws towards God. If that is gone, everything will be corrected. But you know, you haven't drunk the sincere milk. You haven't laid aside that malignity, or what you can call over here as kakia. If you would be laying it aside, then you would have been not breaking the laws, the laws of your first love, the laws of to overcome by igno of your ignorance through repentance and come to learn the knowledge. Ignorance should be replaced by cognizance. You know, knowledge doesn't advance by knowing or learning new facts, but refuting false dogmas. That's ignorance. Ignorance has to be put off. The man who is ignorant, he is the greatest evil. So, malignity and then guile. What is guile? Dolas, decide every crafty nature that demands in the sight of these people who are having to entice you, to deceive you. And why the pastors today, they're asking you to come to the church to deceive you. They're not making you to become disciples. They're not interested to go and to grow up into grammatures day by day, carrying their cross. What they want? They want to deceive you. So, you can look where is the Bible class every day? Nowhere. 
where is day by day, iota upon iota, carrier upon carrier, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept of teaching in the knowledge of Bible doctrine? Nowhere. You're not able to get that now. They've gone out from the standards of this world. The knowledge of Bible doctrine, which has to be for Christ, is God. So you can find over here saying, all guile, decide manner, what have been enticed, what have been deceiving nature, every time they come to deceive you with the sense of making to beg money from you, or with the sense of giving you to say, such and such will be the Christian way of life, we can do better. But in reality, they are really guile, they are really deceiving you. They are dollars, they crafted ones. And then the third one, you can find hypocrite, there is no need to explain about this. Everyone like the chameleon, they are hypocrite. The first say, we shall put our hand to plow the will of Lord God the Father and perform it. But at the end you look. They are hypocrite turning out. As the stage player changes his mask, but in reality he is not the one who is putting upon that mask. So hypocrite, hypocrisy, envies that which has been promoted by jealousy who has been corrupted by having to destroy your own sacredness towards the Lord because you have been defiled by your own standards. So the church has been turned away from the state of knowledge and holiness in which you ought to abide. So he calls over here for you to say fathanos, meant to say what envies, it is not just as a jealousy, but the word goes to say further to emphasize that Christians have been led away from the state of knowledge and holiness in which you ought to avoid. That's the word called to be fathario, envies, it has been translated. So dear brethren, in the Old Testament you could find the opinion of the Jews, the temple was corrupted or destroyed when anyone defied, even in the slightest degree, he would be damaging the entire thing because the guardians there, they neglected their duties. So that's the word envy. You know, here you get all the people together. Because you are ignorant about the state and the holiness of the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That itself proves that you haven't drunk the sincere milk of the word of God. And he says now, Katalalia, which is called as the evil speaking, backbiter, slanderer, gossiping, maligning, judging. So if you have sincerely believed in Christ, he says... By drinking that sincere milk of the word of Lord God, you would be free from all such sort of categories, maligning, gossiping, or this deceitfulness. And you will be like a man who has known or seen the roar of his wrath because you have grown up to be like the person to realize affliction. Grown up to be mature. So, you are a man called to be Gebor, Gebor standards to grow up and to understand the affliction. People are watching over carefully for something, but at the end, you know, they have been not found in the book of life. Because they have left the first love of Lord God. They have been ignorant about the will of Lord God. Every time they have left, they have left, they have left. And what are you able to find? No knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Ignorance has to be replaced by the cognizance in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That is once again in it erect the structure of thinking in the Lord. Because you have been called to shine forth as light luminaries in the midst of this perverse and crooked nation's generations. And if you still fail to get back to your first love in the presence of Lord God the Father, then Lord help you, and you cannot look into the affliction of this people, because you haven't been there, grown up like a Gebor man in his word. So dear brethren, how can you live your first love? You know, you may seem everything is right with you, so that you can make up your place to heaven. As a man thinketh, his body is good and perfect in all the things. Except he goes for a scan, the real troubles will not come out. 
The same thing, the real trouble for your eternity trouble will not come out until as you come and scan yourself in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, the word of the Lord. And if you haven't been there to come up or to look or to understand this real trouble, then dear brethren, you have been not a man or gibber man to see the affliction, but rather you have been still waiting to enjoy the wrath of the Lord God. But you have to be the man looking upon the time to look the affliction and make these people to come back to understand the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That's what he said, looking upon the time you should be communicators of Bible doctrine to these people. But you have been corrupted by the standards of this world. Not able to understand the word of Lord God as number one priority. And since though the richness of Christ, O Lord of God, has been given to live for him and to die, if at all you die for him, many people in the present Christendom have left for the sake of vanities the truth. So the great thing you can look upon in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, in verse 8, as he said, What is the profit for your labor? All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with saying, nor the ear filled with hearing. How long is it may be? <laughs> but after you die, dear brethren, you will realize why at least you have let go the valuable word of God every day. So, dear brethren, he said, you have to be as Job 38, 26, as Christ, O Lord of God, would give rain on the earth, wherewith there is no man, even in the wilderness. So you should be a voice in the wilderness to cry out and to give. That rain meant to say what? The salvation work, so that you can go back and tell to God the Father, you have done that which is his desire. To illustrate that, if you are able to perform, to say not just to be disciples, could grow up into grammatias, but far greater than grammatias, confirming to the image of Christ wherewith you have been predestined, if you are showing that signs of growth, how much happy God the Father would be. When he said, walk with me one while, you have to be happy with him to walk two miles. Not just looking the simple things, but he also wants you to be sharing his great burdens. Don't just enjoy his grace for salvation, but share his burdens in that grace. The burdens of making not none to perish, but making everyone to come to the thorough knowledge of his glory. Have that burden to learn, to know, to understand. That's what a man where there is no wilderness as well, God the Father gives it rain, so that to satisfy the desolate and waste ground and to cause the bird of the tender herb to spring forth. That's what the man of Gibor's strength will be to the Lord when he's continuing in that first love of God. And if you are ignorant about such first love, cognizance will say, come back and carry you across every day and become the disciples of the Lord's mind. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. We shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So think over these issues. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. So with our head burned eyes closed, the closing ones being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to tell him to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself. We shall have eternal truth. This eternal truth, first of all, very simple. Believing Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest man should grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, where we teach shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor, teach us the greatest man to carry so thorn down. Herald the word in season out of sin, because the diamond of my witnesses where you have been called. The number one diamond of my witnesses in building Trinity, fall the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond of my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, then tearing in the course of witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to be, dear brother, and you decide. 
as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, help us to be that mature man to be like the way how you send upon rain even into the parts of the wilderness where there is no man. Lord, you want us to reach the entire parts of the earth, wherever there is man who has been made in your image. Yet, O oh Lord, we haven't even able to budge your inch to the next door of our life. Yet, O oh Father, you have been so gracious to grant us to deliver, uh, to deliver us out from that sort, sort of spiritual death life, and you have given us this new life to understand the marvelous glory of your will when we grow up according to the standards. Yet, O oh Lord, many people are not able to realize this, but Father, show grace upon them, which have already been constantly proclaiming grace, so that, Lord, they that are able to show forth that great wisdom of yours to them, having to love upon you, as you have said in Psalms 132, verse 8 and 9, the resting place, the saints of you will have a great joy who have shown such grace of cassette to the people, having that to be in the list, O oh Lord, help us to preach their word, to teach their word, and nothing else than that, O oh Lord, so that we could be happy and say to come, we have done our work, there is our duty to be done, At, but Lord, you have been here, you have been great work for us along with you. So, Father, we commit everything into the mighty hands and we pray that unto the ministry of God, God, the Holy Spirit, to enlighten, like to, to challenge and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask so Amen.